Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless People ask me, what, what, where do the demons go? Of course, you, if, if you've listened to an exorcist pray, he'll say, I command you to go to the foot of the cross. Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, I'd like to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch the videos and hopefully you'll learn something from this. A while back, I've shared a video about what happened to the demons after they have been cast out during exorcism. So where do the demons go to once they are cast out from someone? Are they destroyed? Or are they just on a run again, searching for their next victims? Well, I've shared with all of you previously a clip of Father Vincent Lamper addressing this particular question. Here, let me share it with you again. When someone is possessed, it means that they've created a connection with that demon. The rite of exorcism breaks that connection. It doesn't destroy the demon. Scripture tells us that they will roam the earth until the final judgment at the end of time. Yeah. But again, the Bible gives us very clear, specific directions on what we can do to gain victory over the devil. In the letter of James, chapter 4, verse 7, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The first letter of Peter, chapter 5, verse 8, your opponent, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Resist him solid in your faith. So the way that we defeat the devil is being solid and true to our faith. Again, we don't have to do anything extraordinary. It's the very ordinary aspects of our faith. And again, if we can recognize and always remember that the power of God is greater than the power of evil, the power of the devil, then ultimately the devil is nothing to fear. I always like to say to people, the devil is like a cockroach. He prefers the darkness. If you go into a room that's infested with bugs, when you turn the light on, what do the bugs do? They scurry for every crack and crevice. In yep. an exorcism, the church is throwing the light of Jesus Christ on these demons. Go back to Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, the bugs, and these things will scurry back into the darkness. They will flee. And then so, unfortunately, they will look for their next victim who's not being steadfast in their faith. But for this video, I'd like to share with you what Monsignor Stephen Rossetti's answer for this particular question. People ask me, what, what, where do the demons go? Of course, you, if, if you've listened to an exorcist pray, he'll say, I command you to go to the foot of the cross. Now, I was in the Holy Sepulchre and I was, uh, we were praying to command demons to go to the foot of the cross. And someone said, we are at the foot of the cross. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a metaphor. We, we send you to Jesus because Jesus is the only one who determines where they go. We don't. We, it's not my job. I, and I don't have that authority. We send you to Jesus. Jesus determines where you go. Now, I would say, though, that uh, these typical major uh, demons, Beelzebul and Baal and, and all those, uh, they surface again and again. So obviously they're still roaming the earth. But at the end of time, uh, they will be locked in hell forever. So they're given a time to be able to afflict uh, people until the final judgment. But this is part of God's plan. They, their afflictions or temptations, whatever, can help to make us holy. So despite their evil intentions, they actually are doing God's will in, a, in an indirect way. This is an old video of Father Lampert blessing a house after several reports by the owner of this house that the family has been experiencing some sort of paranormal activities. And since the blessing, the owner has denied any further paranormal activity. I left the link to the full video in the description box down below. Amen. And we'll go and bless every room in the house. So I'll let you lead the way. So your presence and banishment, any restless spirits or any evil spirits, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, we ask your blessing upon this room. Fill it with your presence and banishment, any restless spirits or any evil spirits. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sorry, Lydia. There are items that can be used in a negative sense. So when we talk about demonic infestation, 
it's not just in a location, but it can be associated with an object. So there are objects that can be used to uh, advance what the devil is trying to do. So you think of voodoo or witchcraft, think of people that use magic wands, think of Ouija boards, voodoo dolls. You know, there's a lot of things that are uh, that can be used in a negative sense. So those things are very much real. Now, if an item has the presence of evil with it, the question I would ask is, is the object inherently evil? Meaning, obviously, if it's a voodoo doll, it's inherently evil. But it is possible for a regular object, perhaps, to have a curse placed upon it. It may not be inherently evil, but because of the curse placed upon it, it's bringing about the presence of the demonic. And in that case, that object simply could be blessed to return it to its original state, if you will. But something that's inherently evil should always be destroyed. And again, think of things, the Ouija board, a magic wand, tarot cards, again, things like that. God of heaven, God of earth, God of angels, God of archangels, God of patriarchs, God of prophets, God of apostles, God of martyrs, God of confessors, God of virgins, God who has power to give life after death and rest after work. Because there is no other God than thee, and there can be no other. For thou art the creator of all things, visible and invisible, of whose reign there shall be no end. We humbly prostrate ourselves before thy glorious majesty, and we beseech thee to deliver us by thy power from all the tyranny of the infernal spirits, from their snares, their lies, and their furious wickedness. Deign, O Lord, to grant us thy powerful protection, and to keep us safe and sound. We beseech thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the malice and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the divine power, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who roam through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. And loving God, in a very special way, we ask your blessing upon this family. We pray that you always be with them, to watch over them, bless and protect them, to keep them safe from any danger, especially any evil or presence that may have been in this home. We're confident of your great power, and we know that wherever you are present, that evil will flee, so that this family may be in this home and rest securely in your peace. We ask your blessing upon them now, in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that's all for this video. Again, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully, you've learned something from this. Until next time, thanks again for watching and God bless you.